So, Just wanted to do a bit of a disclaimer ahead of today's video. We're going to uh, some talk about mushrooms and we had a bit of a messy weekend. And I just wanted to outline that 95% of the time I act with incredible discipline, no drugs, no alcohol, um, very disciplined with the gym, work, eating, and that's how I think your life should be. This is an example of that 5% of the time where I do decide to have fun and let my hair down a little bit and get a little bit crazy, which I think we all do, but I just want you to know I wouldn't recommend it for all the time. It's like that 95% of the time, stay disciplined, 5% of the time, let yourself have that bit of fun, let yourself let your hair down a little bit. So let's get into the video, disclaimer done. Stay healthy, stay on routine, but every now and again, it's okay to have a laugh. Enjoy. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> oh, your, arm, your arm actually looks big right now. Yeah, buddy. You're looking fucking big. I'm gonna start my video here. <laughs> this fucking, this is like a very natural, <laughs> literally mid sentence you just start fucking recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same shit every day. Wake up, all that shit. We'll sit there. We've got the mindset of like, eating this food is now a fucking task. It's like a check mark that needs to be ticked off. I agree. Yeah. I need to think of my food the same way. Yeah, not, not pleasure. Just fucking get it down here. Yeah. That's what it's like and uh, this is what you have to do when you're on the bulk. You have to put food as a task that needs to be completed. Because for me, like the tough thing about bulking is making the time to eat the food. Yeah. And forgetting to eat, especially when you're busy. Yeah. Like it is a bit of a challenge. I've like got to schedule it in to our routine. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone who wants to bulk or put on muscle, you need to basically schedule that shit in. Mm. And uh, figure out your macros, figure out the exact calories you need and just fucking schedule that in your, in your calendar. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. Biggest reason why people don't grow is because they don't actually track their calories. They don't actually know what they're putting in and they don't have enough building blocks. You reckon I should like fully track them then? Because like we're just going with like this wishy washy like oh, yeah, it's around about a thousand calories and shit like that. Like, I think it's okay to do averages as long as your averages are pretty close. I think Hamza's been doing this a while. Yeah. I think Hamza's a good person to guide you with it. I think yeah. personally for you, I would your first week. It's going to be tough because of the food in Thailand. You, it's tough to get calories on things. Mm -hmm. I would f track with my fitness pal the mm -hmm. first week. I feel like progressive overload my diet as well, like, because I struggle to, like, stuff my fucking face, so it's like, I just need to continue to stuff my face and just go beyond my edge of comfort over and over and over again, and eventually I will be able to just eat more. The thing with stuffing your face is you could end up putting on a load of fat and you don't need to. You only need, a, you only need enough of a surplus to make muscle. You don't need too much. If you get too much of a surplus, it gets stored as fat. So you, you need the sweet spot, like the more calories you eat, you are going to get heavier and heavier, but it will go on as fat. Like you just need the amount that your body can use to synthesize muscle. Mm. After that, anything after that is dead weight. That's how I stay lean, but get bigger at the same time by just eating enough to grow, but not going on a mad, mad bulk. So what are you saying for me that I'm like, I'm like five, five, 10, five, 11, yep. 64 kg right now. Yep. I think you can put on 10 kilos of muscle. Mm. But I'd look at doing that over a year, slowly. How many calories do you reckon? I think, I think 3,900. 3,900, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Because my metabolism is fucking crazy as well. Yeah, and, and what you do is you do 3,900, you stay on that for maybe two weeks, check your progress, your weight, your strength. If it's not going up, weight's staying the same, you're not seeing any improvements in the strength, then you add another 200, 4,100 calories. You go again. Still not seeing anything, add on again. And then when you start to see that slow weight increase, slow strength increase, and you know you're in the sweet spot, you just keep feeding it. Do you eat the same shit every day? Or do yeah. You like switch on? yeah. Same okay. shit every day. I feel day. like it's easier to, if, to see the same shit every day and you can't go fucking on. I would recommend to anybody who uh, wants to bulk that you eat the same shit every day. Yeah. Because you fucking know what the calories are and it's easy. Just less fucking noise, isn't it? Yeah. But on other news, what did we do here yesterday, Sam? <laughs> should you, you want to talk about this? Well, I think we should talk about it. I mean, I, I want to be right. raw. I want to be authentic. Uh, I want to be authentic for the right, so. for the YouTube. So, and I'm feeling a, I feel happy talking to with you about it. So, right. So yesterday we had the intention of uh, going out kayaking. Should um, we show them where we were going to go? 
Yeah. Let's get that one. Yeah. We can fucking see it from our, from our villa here. Yeah. yeah. So this is Sam and Hamza's villa. Really beautiful place. A bit of a mess right now. It's a little bit of a mess. Yesterday, as we were about to, we were about to explain, was a, gonna go over there, a hell of a ruckus. If you can see that, that's the island we were planning to go to. Yeah, back over there. So we had a we had a bit of a trip planned out, didn't we? Yeah. It's getting us sucked so the white boy's not built this, so. Um, okay, I mean, let's go just back to sitting here. Yeah. It's too hot out here, man. Yeah, 30 degrees. But yeah. Where do we even start? We planned, we planned on uh, going kayaking over there. And uh, at the same time, we were like, oh, we should uh, <laughs> be a good idea. We'll do some uh, shrooms, we'll do some magic mushrooms. Uh, we'll, we'll take them in a shake, which I didn't know you could do actually. Jack told me you could blend them up in a fruit shake and drink it. And that's actually a much nicer way to, to have them. Cause I've done them once before this and they tasted like shit. It was horrible. It's actually quite nice drinking out of a shake. So drink it out of a shake. And, uh, you know, drive home, you know, they won't start hitting for like an hour or two, it's fine. And then we'll just get a kayak, kayak out, and we'll start tripping on the island and it'll be really fun, good time. The problem was, <laughs> literally, five minutes after I drank my shake, they started hitting me like a fucking truck. <laughs> and we hadn't even left the place where we bought them from to drive home. I still had to drive. So I very fucking foolishly to be honest with you drove home while tripping balls and the roads were literally going like this and like i could see patterns in the pavement and stuff like that it was really wild i should not have drove at all but it was quite a short drive so we, we got there got home and um just i was tripping balls and then we were sat in the lounge just there and uh, it started hitting the other guys as well, and we, we very quickly decided, like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not going kayaking. <laughs> Hell, fucking no, we can't, we can't be seen in public right now. The problem was for me though, because I had the frame of mind now of like, oh, I need to try and not trip and like survive because I have to drive home. That set my frame of mind for the entire trip. So I ended up having a really fucking bad trip because of that, because you're not supposed to fight against the mushrooms. Um, but I did because I had to get home <laughs> and not crash. <laughs> so that set my frame of mind up for just like, I'll survive and don't, don't like, don't trip, don't, you know, embrace the shrooms or whatever. So I ended up having a really bad trip. These guys were all out there, like lying face first on the fucking pavement. <laughs> Tell them about that. You guys are looking at like naked women and shit. Well, what happened was, the last time, I, I've only done mushrooms, this was the second time I've done them. The other time was on the island over there in Koh Panyang, And I did a uh, hero's dose last time. I did 10 grams of mushrooms. So for a it, was, it was fucking, it was an incredible experience, but it was super, super intense. It was very emotional. It was, it was really crazy. And I really kind of didn't want to experience that again this time. I wanted more of a relaxed vibe, like a fun vibe. We were planning the kayak adventure. And I just thought this is going to be a great time. Don't know what happened with the shrooms, but they were fucking unbelievably strong. Yeah. So this five grams that we had this time was, was stronger for me than the 10 grams I had last time. So, really? Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, so it fucking blew my head off. And I, we were just hanging out there, hanging in the pool. It was fun. Man, it just started getting more and more intense. Me, Hamza and Bill were just lying face down on the floor <laughs> over there, <laughs> looking into the tiles. This was quite a fun part. We could see like naked women dancing in the tiles. It was fucking crazy. And then it just started to get deep as hell. I was just seeing things and people coming towards me. Sam was tripping his absolute balls off. Fucking yeah. came in here, spilt fucking strawberry milk all over his bed. <laughs> Was laying here just sweating profusely, entire bed soaked. Yeah. We're trying to get him out there into the sun. Because look how fucking nice it is out there. If you've, if you've ever done shrooms before, you'd want to be out there. You wouldn't want to fucking be in here. I, I was in here with the curtains closed, just no sun, just literally lying there for two hours, convinced that I was dying. And literally just rolling over and turning and just groaning to myself for literally two hours straight. And I was honestly convinced I was going to die. It was the fucking scariest shit I've ever like been through. I, I feel like I was somewhat um, 
accepted death after that. It's weird, because I genuinely thought I was going to fucking die. <laughs> it was so scary, man. I had, like... Because I think my brain, like, convinced... I was convinced I was dying. I had, like, physical symptoms. It felt like my body was just giving up, and the void was literally calling me, and I was constantly fighting against it. Just, like, moving around to just make sure that I'm okay and still alive yeah. and stuff. And my breathing was so shallow as well. As, was, you looked... Like, Sam actually cool. looked like he was dying. Sam... Sam had convinced himself so much that he was dying that his body actually started to show symptoms of death. When, when you finally, me, Hamza and Bill were up there, we were starting to really enjoy ourselves again. It had gotten pretty heavy for me as well. Felt like I was sort of slipping into the abyss, similar to what Sam said. And uh, just managed to sort of pull myself out of it. Was up there on the balcony with Hamza and Bill and then fortunately Sam emerged yeah, from the cave and he, came out at he was point. just looking like, ah, like he was going to fucking die on us. Every like two seconds I was like, to Jack and Bill, like, yeah, you guys got water. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, every two fucking seconds like, no, you got the water, bro, you got the water. And we were running out of water as well, so <laughs> Sam, <laughs> <and> rationing. <laughs> Sam <laughs> drank the equivalent of like six litres of water <laughs> because he had been sweating so heavily in his bed for two hours that he was about to die of dehydration. <laughs> Um, Should I speak the water? <laughs> yeah, get, get your water in. I've got my water in today. I will say the mushrooms for me, they, they do give you the next day, I think, a little bit of a... Feeling a little bit like a hangover or a bit of a come down today. It was, it was intense. It we, was a, we, we, the thing is, though, we, we smoked weed like pretty pretty quickly afterwards so I yeah. thought that was a bit of a rocky move we should have enjoyed like the afterglow because mm. that's like you feel so good after doing shrooms every time and I did feel really good last night chilling with you guys like yeah. smoking weed and like we were just like we just I felt good on the yeah. first joint by the third I was a vegetable that's <laughs> yeah, basically Jack smoked how it too. went I, I was I smoked a bit too much I was totally KO'd on the floor to be fair when, when you left uh, me and Hamza smoked a little bit more and that, that shit hit me pretty hard I had to lie down yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was already up. obliterated it was yeah. uh, it was a messy weekend it was Hamza's birthday mm. we had a great time I like shrooms because they give you like quite a nice reset and I'd say to anyone who's trying to get off alcohol or trying to beat an addiction if you go into your shroom trip with that in your mind I, I the last time I did shrooms I really it put me off alcohol I've been off alcohol for a while but it made me not want it anymore so before I was using willpower to not have the alcohol. And after shrooms, I found it was very easy to say no. You just don't really want that poison in you. So it does refresh your, your perspective on things, but it's not something I would do too often. Yeah, it's sick. Now we've started the bulk as well. I'm, uh, I, was, I was cutting, which it's just, it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, I was very obsessed with like getting abs, but it's like, yeah. who gives a shit? I mean, I've seen, walking around, um, with Jack and Hamza, who have these just fucking gorilla frames, like, look at this guy, fucking Del Lord. Literally, you just, I was just seeing the level of, like, respect that that fucking grants you, mm. just at first glance, and it's yeah. like, it's so inspiring, it's like, this, I want to wanna look like a fucking yeah. unit walking towards people. Yeah, I think yesterday you said you want a threatening aura. I want a threatening aura, <laughs> yeah. I want a threatening aura, but then, but then I want to be like nice, and it's like a surprise. Yeah. I yeah. actually yeah. nice. It's that. It's like people. For me, it, I didn't understand it until I had it. It's like it is worth getting the big physique. Like I wouldn't recommend doing gear, but getting as big as your body can naturally get, I think, is a great thing for a man to do. Mm. You get respect instantly from other guys, and girls love it. It just makes your life easier. You've got to have the other parts of the puzzle as well mm. like you've got to have the personality to go with it especially with chicks but it does open more doors so Absolutely. i would say that to anyone looking to really get in shape is um yeah hit that shit get fucking huge it's a good idea Fuck yeah, man. let's wrap i think that's i think that's good enough yeah. I think that's it's enough insight for one day. <laughs> i think that's enough insight for one day <laughs> well anyway guys that's today's video yeah man What's your, what's your outro going to be, bro? You need like a quirky outro. Mine is like I do a salute and then I go like that and I zoom on my face. I'm going to do, uh, what do I do all the time? Just, I do the salute do quite a lot. Yeah, I do the gorilla shit. I just do, um... <laughs> just lay your phone down and just like... <laughs> oh yeah, good idea. That's a good idea actually. <laughs> actually, I'll just record you. It's okay because... Oh yeah, okay, you can give me a record. <laughs> Alright, this is how I normally become. Let me just become a gorilla quickly.
You have to get him back there. Peace. <laughs> 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 <laughs>